Yo, Elliot, the last four years, I've pushed the boundaries of opening new businesses. The last business I opened had really tapped out my bank account and credit. By trade, I'm a massage therapist and personal trainer. But I really dislike massage therapy, but I make a lot more money doing that than with personal training. Since I make more money with massage, I haven't gone on all in with training. I have my own small studio now, but it's currently just me training out of it. And I have one guy I'm currently working with to bring on to work with me. I have big goals for the personal training side, but I'm not devoting nearly as much time to that since it currently isn't the biggest money maker. I'm having trouble deciding if I should go all in with the building of the business I want on the personal training side, or should I just grit my teeth and continue doing massage until my finances are looking better? I've heard you tell stories uh, on your tough times building your strength camp, so I'm interested on on what your hindsight is now on the struggles that you've had and if you would have had things done di done things differently. That's funny. It's, you know why I think your question's funny? Because as a personal trainer, I remember thinking, man, I'd make more money as a massage therapist. I remember I had massage therapist friends and I would refer people to a massage therapist and I would go to massage therapist and I'd be like, wow, First of all, they don't really need to talk to anybody, right? They're, they're, you're just kind of, you're doing your work. You're just like a guy who's like building a, a mason who's building a wall, right? You're just, oh, I'm just building my wall. I don't got to talk to anybody. I don't got to do anything. I'm just doing it, right? That's one thing. Sometimes I'm introverted and I don't want to be talking to people with personal training. I mean, like they want to talk to you. You want to talk to them. And it's just too much interaction. And you make less money as a personal trainer. So I remember thinking the grass is greener on the other side. And that's kind of what I want you to recognize as well. Right now, you're doing what I did, which I'm saying is a mistake. The grass is greener, right? You're thinking the grass is greener on the other side. Well, it isn't because I was on the other side and I was looking on your side and I was saying, wow, the grass looks green over there. I want to point that out because this is something that we're all going to kind of struggle with. It's, it's very easy to denigrate and forget the, the blessings of what we have when we see somebody with something else or we see something out there that we want, forgetting that it is a part of our fallen nature to believe that the grass is greener on the other side. Because once you get there, you realize, hey, this grass ain't much better than mine. In fact... I like my grass better. Oh, here's another one. Here's a really good one. And I would invite you to go look up this title on YouTube. It's called Acres of Diamonds. Acres of Diamonds. And I think, uh, I think Earl Nightingale does a, does a, uh, speaks this. And you could probably find it on YouTube. Acres of Diamonds. So there's a story of an African farmer. This is how it goes. And he's living on his land, right? He's got multi many acres, right? Maybe 100 acres, whatever it is. But he's living on this land. And people have been traveling through and telling him of the diamonds that have been found in other lands. And so, you know, he's on his land and he's like, well, my land is good and all. It's nice, but I want them diamonds. So he sells his land. And then he goes off looking for the acres of diamonds. Well... The story goes on, and now we're in the home of the new owner of those 100 acres that the original farmer had. And so the, the new owner has a friend come over one day, and a friend comes into his house, and he looks on his mantle, and he sees these, like, black, ugly, like, kind of, not I want to say ugly, but black, rough, nasty-looking rocks, He's like, wow, what do you, what are these, why do you have these black rocks up on your uh, mantle? And the guy's like, oh, I don't know. There are just thousands of them down by the river on my property. And, you know, I just been picking them up and putting them over here. I thought that they were strange rocks. And his friend goes, picks it up. He starts examining. He's like, you know what this is? These are diamonds in the rough. <laughs> Think about the gold, the gold rush in the, in the 1840s, right? These are gold. And the guy was like, wow, really? These, these are diamonds? I had no idea. And the friend showed him, you know, I guess he knew how to process it or whatever. He was like, yeah, these are giant diamonds. And the guy is rich. Now, the guy that sold the land in order to find the sake acres of diamonds didn't realize he was sitting on his acres of diamonds. He didn't realize that that which he's looking for is right where he's at. 
There are so many examples of this story. Have you read The Alchemist? The Alchemist is a great book by Paulo Coelho. Paulo Coelho. It's, it's one of these books that are like bestsellers for many, many generations or many, many years. Anyway, And it's about a boy that goes on a journey. And long story short, he leaves his land to go to Egypt because he hears that there's treasure there. He gets all the way there, gets beat up, sent back home, and he finds his treasure in the barn that he left. There's a reason why these stories are told over and over again. Because it's an archetype, to, and, it, and it's a warning against essentially what I've done and what you're doing right now, which is not realizing that that which we want, that what she really want is usually right under our feet. It's right there. Oh, but that looks so much better. Oh, I bet he has more freedom. I bet he has more money. I bet he has more fun. And then when you get there, you look back and you're like, wait a second, that was better, right? And, and, and when I say better, it's subjective because it's more suited to you, right? Personal training was more suited to me. Now, I don't know if it's not suited to you or not, but there's a reason why you are a massage therapist. There's a reason why I was a personal trainer. And there's a reason why I wasn't a massage therapist. And there's a reason why you didn't start out as a personal trainer. So I just want you to, that part of it, I want you to just sort of acknowledge that we're, we tend to play this grass is greener game. Now, I made a video the other day also about something similar where I said everything that you're looking for is right where you are, right? And so, right now, you have a stallion. I'm gonna use another metaphor here. You have a stallion. What is a stallion? A stallion is a horse that runs the race and wins you money. Dan Kennedy says, you feed your stallions and you starve your ponies. Right now, you have a stallion and you have a pony. Right? Pay attention to this. This is from Dan Kennedy. This is from my top business mentor. Right? I, th I think Dan Kennedy is the guru of business. Right? Everything that I learned, basically every other business guru that's out there right now has either directly or indirectly learned what he knows from Dan Kennedy. He's the godfather of direct response marketing and business. The guy's awesome. One of the favorite things he's ever said that I've heard him say is... Feed your stallions, starve your ponies. What does that mean? Look at your business and decide what is bringing you home the prize, right? Completely objective. Dan Kennedy is a very objective man. I understand many of us are very subjective. Many of us are very feeling, and I know I am. I'm not knocking you guys. We're very feeling. We're very, we want to be passionate about what we're doing. Dan Kennedy only looks at the bottom line. He's a businessman. He's passionate about business. He's, he's passionate about the bottom line. And if you're concerned about your bottom line, then the bottom line is you got to drop that pony, starve the pony. If the personal training business is not bringing you money, it's not actually a business, just like that pony is not actually an award-winning, money-making stallion. It's actually just draining on you, right? What do I got this damn pony for? It's not doing anything. It's just eating my food. It's, just, it's costing me something to have this pony. Now the stallion... Might require a little bit more work for me. Might, might be a little bit more of a hassle to deal with. But that old stallion bringing home the bacon, right? And so I want you to consider that also, right? Like, are you, are you considering getting rid of your stallion so that you can feed a pony? Because right now, personal training is a pony. It's a pony to you. <laughs> so... Just, just a few things for you to think about, man. Your, let me see if I got your question clearly. You said, I really don't even have a question here. You just want to hear my in insight on it, sounds like, right? I've heard you tell multiple stories on your tough times building strength camp, so I'm interested in your insights on how the struggles you had and would you have done things differently. I wouldn't have done anything differently except being so silly as to think that the grass would be greener on the other side. I did that. I did that a lot of times. In fact, I, mean, I, I made a lot of mistakes with regard to my business when it came to that. There are so many, you know, they say it's shiny object syndrome. There, I have shiny object syndrome many times. There are many times where I was about to forsake or partially forsaked the gifts that I had, my own acres of diamonds, for 
some shit out there. You see people doing this with all kinds of things in their lives. They do it with their marriages too. They do it with their relationships. What a shame. I know what I, I watching this happen right now to one of Colleen's friends. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for her and I want to say something, but I keep my mouth shut. Um, she divorced her husband because she thought there would be something better out there. She went out there, got hooked up with some, in my opinion, was not a, not a good guy. I mean, why, I mean, first of all, the guy is, he smokes weed every day. He's like 50, 55 years old and he's addicted to smoking weed. I, I could imagine he's probably been doing it for 30 years, right? And a grown man, right? I and mean, listen, I have empathy too because I know what it's like to be addicted to weed. I was, but I, but I quit, <laughs> right? And I wasn't trying to be husband material for a new woman who just left her, left her real husband. Anyway, long story short, yeah, she left her husband. She go, hooked up with this other dude and it didn't work out. And in my mind, I'm like, hey, you should just go back to your husband. Go back to your acres of diamond. You had an acres of diamond. You had your, 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 your plot of land, but you're so busy looking over there. Oh, I think I want something else. Happens all the time with a lot of different things. So I would just say, be, uh, just be mindful of what you might be doing. I will just leave you with this, right? We spoke a lot about a lot of different things here. I will leave you with this. If you don't know what to do, don't do anything at all. And if it's not making its way to you in the same way that you're make, trying to make your way towards it, that means it's not, it's not yours, right? If you're trying to go after something and it's moving further away from you, that's usually an indication that it's not for you. I think uh, Emerson or Thoreau says, move in the directions of your dream and, your, and the dream will move towards you. Well, sometimes our dreams are actually nightmares. Sometimes our dreams, that's not your dream. You think it's your dream, but if it's not moving back towards you, then it don't want you, <laughs> right? Just like a woman, right? Or like a cat. You want to go pet that cat. <laughs> I'll go pet that cat. Look at that cat. And you go towards the cat to go pet that cat because you love cats and you want to feel them purr. And the cat runs. That You don't chase that cat. You ever try to chase a cat? That's a losing proposition. <laughs> don't go chase that cat. And so that's that. I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.